let's get started, man. I'm excited to bring on these three guests. And uh, uh, beforehand, obviously, we want to welcome you guys back to another Friday edition of Late Night with Locks. Uh, I can't thank you guys so much for all the love you have continued to show us as we've continued this thing through the pandemic. It's been a great way to stay connected with all things DMV, all things Terps, all things Coach Locks. A great, uh, a great way for us to just stay connected. Um, I want to thank our guest on uh, Tuesday, Sean Davis, former Terp, current Washington Redskin, for coming on. Appreciate you, Sean as well as DJ Moore, another great Terp, who's doing big things down in Carolina with the Panthers. And really appreciate you, DJ, sharing your daughter with us uh, the other day. So proud of the work that both you former Terps have been doing at the next level. And we want to continue to wish you guys great success. Uh, anytime you miss the show, uh, you can catch the highlights on NBC Sports Washington, who's partnered up with us, along with the Maryland Athletics YouTube page, as well as our Hear the Terps part, hear the uh, Hear the Terps podcast, uh, all three of those platforms rerun all the different shows, and we've had some great guests on here throughout uh, this season. So, again, I want to thank all of our former guests that have come on and allowed us to utilize this time to reconnect. Um, we want to continue to thank all of our frontline workers as you guys continue to work through uh, doing great things and uh, for our communities. Uh, the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, the delivery guys, the store clerks, all of you guys, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the effort and hard work that you guys continue to give us. And with that, man, we'll, we'll get started. We got some uh, big time guests on tonight. And the first one is a guy that I've gotten to know the last 15, 20 years. Uh, you guys know him as the face and anchor of College Game Day. He's also served as an ESPN. Years, uh, beautiful voice, a guy that really can add so much uh, to college football. My guy, Reese Davis. What's happening, Reese? Lots. It's great to be with you, man. I want to show you if you can see what I'm wearing right here. I want you to get one of these pretty oh, soon. The Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl. The huh? Rose Bowl. I see you <laughs> representing the Rose Bowl. Uh, only a guy like you can get those. Now, I have, I have, if you remember, I have been to the Rose Bowl once. I, I know. I know you have. The team, but I got to get another team back there, man. That's right. In the Big Ten, we know that's the ultimate to be able to get to the Rose Bowl. Tell me what's going on, man. I know for us, on the, on our side of it, uh, we are just itching to get back. And we had Herbie on the show earlier this season. What have you been up to, man? And what's going on in your life during, the, during this quarantine? Well, actually, you know what? The weird thing about it is this time of year, it's not terribly different for me from normal in terms of how much I'm at home. This is a little bit of a slow time, usually right after the final four. Obviously not, you know, not going to a ball game, not going to dinner, and obviously being fully aware of everything that's going on. It's really serious. It's been different. But in terms of the amount of time I've been home, I mean, it's, it's kind of the way it always is. But I'm, I'm really eager to get back to, I've talked to um, you and a lot of uh, other coaches and stuff. I know people are really anxious to get back. And I know there are some hurdles and some things that, that people have to deal with and be cognizant of to do so safely. But hopefully we can do that. And I think it would be great for um, not only those of us who love the sport, but just everybody in football to, uh, to be able to get back and play. Right. Well, I know this, man. The, the news coming from the NCAA the other day, which kind of paved the way for us to start the process of getting back to the new normal. Because I had a team meeting yesterday, and as I told our team, even with the voluntary workouts during the month of June that they've allowed us to have, it won't be your old normal voluntary workouts because there's still so many things that we have to work through uh, mm -hmm. to ensure their safety, their health, and their welfare. And I know for you guys, and again, you know, this is the time of the year where you're probably doing a lot of research yep. uh, with the hopes of football. I spent I spent probably about an hour on a uh, Zoom call with uh, Kirby yesterday. And, again, he's working on his craft and asking where college football is going, trends and stuff. What's going on with your family, man? Are you guys all safe and where you guys hold up at? Yeah, we're, uh, we're all in Connecticut, and everybody's, everybody's doing great. I've got two kids in college. My daughter just uh, finished her sophomore year at NYU. And, uh, and my son will, uh, will graduate from Princeton a week from Sunday. 
Wow. And he's a, he's a baseball player. He's got some more eligibility left. And I'm not sure the Maryland people are going to like what I'm about to say, but he's, uh, he's, he's going to Duke to play next year, to play as a grad transfer. So uh, I don't know if the move to the Big Ten has lessened the feelings for Duke at all, but uh, that's, where, that's where we are right now. But uh, we're, all, we're all safe and healthy and, and happy to be and blessed to be that that's way. great to hear. And obviously both of them probably finished their, their, uh, their, their academics right there at home. And yeah, they did. I know for me. It was great having my family back here and back home. Uh, the short time that you get to get them, especially uh, being in college and playing sports. How much, and just from your side of it, how different do you expect college football to be as we move forward? I mean, you hear about possibly empty stadiums. I've had more questions to me, like, well, what's going to happen with fans? And mm -hmm. I mean, I think with the empty stadiums and the social distancing things that we'll put in, it's going to put even more pressure on you guys to basically bring the game to life uh, from a TV standpoint. And are there any things you guys are doing differently as you guys prepare for possibly a new normal with how you cover college football and college sports? For our show, the one that, you know, Kirk and I do college game day, it could be a tremendous difference. And we've had um, several calls and meetings about what it would look like. Would we look for different types of venues on campus in order to, um, have smaller crowds, if we are allowed to have crowds, if so, how do we ensure social distancing there? Or do we find spots on campus and just do the show with no crowd? Um, that seems uh, almost blasphemous given the history of the show, but if that's, you know, if that's what it takes to keep people uh, as healthy as possible, then obviously we will comply with that. Uh, I, you know, Lox, I just think the, I'd rather have the sport, and I think it would be better for everybody, the country, the psyche, everything, if we can do it safely and have the sport, even if we have to limit the number of fans. And I'm not going to lie, it's going to be weird. I mean, the <laughs> atmosphere in college football is what sets it apart. I mean, and uh, the one thing I think that will be interesting, because you, you know this even better than I do, players sort of pick up on the energy in the stadium. And, you know, you make a big play, a big pick, a big stop on, you know, on third down or get a big conversion on third down since you're an offensive guy. You know, people, you get, start generating some momentum. What's that momentum going to be like without the same level of noise and uh, vibe in the stadium that you're used to? That'll be really um, – I think it'll be a challenge for some. It'll be interesting to see. No doubt, which then makes your job even that more, yeah. more tough. You know, obviously being the host of – College game day, and, and I ran into you here. We got a version of it with the game day basketball game that you guys came down and did here in College Park. And I get the question all the time, like, when are we going to be able to get them? I say, hey, i got to do my part. But <laughs> thinking back to the time, I think you've been doing game day for, what, 15 years now? I've been doing game day for five. I've been, I have been did uh, college football in the studio right. for, like, 16 years before that. So right. I've covered the sport for more than – well over 20 years. So with your – with game day, in particular, yeah. I like to ask our people, what's the most memorable? Because I know I, I, as a coach, we're usually sitting in a hotel and, and, and playing our anxious and just butterflies, and, and you usually get to pick up just a little bit of it. But, and I, I can remember watching game day, and you guys have taken it to some unique places. What's the best situation or best scenario that you feel the last five years you've done game day? What place really stands out to you? Washington State. Um, they had, you know, they had the entire quest for 15 years, every show, the school flag, old crimson through a network of alums would show up at game day site, no matter where it was in a quest to get the show to come to Pullman. And a couple of years ago, we finally had the right game. They were playing Oregon, Gardner Minshew against Justin Herbert, you know, really important game, the Pac-12 North. And we went there and I mean, they delivered. I, I found in my five years, that places like Washington State that desperately want the show and have worked for it, or taking the show back to a place where football is really, really important, but the show hasn't been there in a long time. Those, those atmospheres are energized. The two that come to mind were Penn State. I want to say it had been eight or nine years, maybe since the – uh, Boo, I know. I've said Penn State and Duke on your show. You're never going to ask me to come back. Yeah. And uh, and the other was Virginia Tech. We hadn't been there in a long time, went back, and it was a great atmosphere there. And, you know, I think that 
I think that going to a place like Maryland, we would get a similar type situation because the basketball vibe at Maryland was was awesome. It was, it was a great, great show. I showed up just to get a feel for what it would feel like. And Coach Turgeon and his staff and, and that basketball team had a tremendous season going on. And, and unfortunately, because of COVID-19 and, 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 and the coronavirus got cut short. Uh, before I let you leave, so I, I got a fanboy experience a couple of weeks ago. I had Cal Ripken Jr. on and got to do my, an interview with Cal Ripken. Oh, wow. And uh, as a young kid growing up in the DMV area, watching – Cal Ripken, my whole life until we finally got our own team here in D.C. What's, what's one of your favorite or most memorable interviews that you've done or somebody that you've interviewed that you've always wanted to talk to and just, just really jumped out to you? We did something, Lox, uh, you know, prior to, um, prior to the, the off-the-field things that happened at Penn State. We did a thing in State College with Mike Krzyzewski, and Joe Paterno together at, at a place on campus there, did it in a big auditorium. And having those two guys, uh, you know, who had won as much as they had and have them, you know, answer questions, tell stories, talk about philosophy together, that was, uh, that was really memorable for me because it was unusual. I mean, you, you know, I'd spoken to both before. Uh, you know, I've had an opportunity to, you know, talk to through my career, everybody in, in virtually every sport you can think of. I even I even did the uh, car racing show for a while, and I sort of laughed when they asked me to do it. I said, if you're said if you're asking, if you're thinking, hey, let's get the guy from Alabama to do the car racing show, I said, you've got the wrong dude. I said, and uh, they were like, no, no, no. I've learned it, and you know, ended ended up talking to guys like Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt, and. Um, you know, and, and talk to all manner of you guys in coaching who I, I really enjoy. And I spent time as a, a broadcast partner with Bob Knight. So I've spent a, a lot of time with him and obviously Lou Holtz. But having that opportunity to have Coach K and Joe Paterno together was, uh, was one of the more memorable, memorable things I've done in my career. Well, you guys have been just a bright spot for college football, the game day show, the crew. Uh, you can feel the energy, you guys, obviously, with us not knowing what the future looks like. Uh, it's great to be able to have you come on, man. And, and I can't thank you enough uh, for coming on, uh, Reese, and, and, and want to wish you well. Tell your family, stay you safe. And, and our goal is to get you guys down here to College Park for football so we can show you that we will bring the energy. And I'm man. excited for you, man, and best of luck. Thanks for coming Thanks. on, Reese. Hey, same, same to you, Lox. And you know how much I think of you as a coach and a person, and, and you guys are going to win huge, and I'll be excited to see it. So good luck, good luck with everything. Thanks so much. Hi, right, buddy. Davis, college game day host, uh, another guy that brings so much to the college football landscape. It's always great to catch up with guys and the, the things that they add to it. So, again, I want to thank Reese for taking time out of his schedule to come on. And uh, we're going to continue to move forward. Uh, I, the next guest is a guy that's putting on right here in the DMV. He's playing for our Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Raven Nation is showing out for him. He was drafted in the first round with the 16th pick out of Alabama in the 2017 draft. Was a first-team All-Pro in 2019. I had the privilege of going against this guy every day in practice with my wide receivers. And there is no more. No one more competitive than this dude right here. Marlo, what's happening with you? What's good? Man, I'm just uh, chilling. How we doing? Inside, you're inside chilling? Well, I'm outside chilling, man. I'm over here. Let me show you my view right now, man. I'm good looking. I'm over here at the lake, man. Good old, good old view. On the lake, man. That's a good old, good old country boy from Birmingham, which I, don't, I wouldn't call that. I wouldn't call that country, though, Marlo. Wouldn't call that country, man. So talk a little yeah. bit about what's been up with you, man. What have you been up to? What have you been doing doing during this pandemic? I know last season with the Ravens, you guys really uh, got this area uh, uh, going uh, with the type of season you had. What's going on in your life during the pandemic? Man, uh, it's – for me, man, I've been outside a lot. I, uh, I've been outside, you know, being in the house, you know, do that so long, so – I've been I've been working out a little more than usual, you know, running some miles, and I, I've been doing a lot of a lot of different stuff outside. I uh, I'm trying to learn some Spanish. Um, 
I cooked dinner for the fam the other night. It's been uh, it's it's been, you know, for me being that my whole family came back. I got two brothers, two sisters, and really, man, it's been some great family time. It, it seemed like it, I'm back in middle school again. My oldest brother's at the house, oldest sister, and we haven't had the whole family back together and for this long since I was, you know, a kid. So. To, you know, just be around my big bro, big sis, little bro, little little sis, you know, is it really good? So it's been a lot of good family time, a lot of trying to learn some new stuff with the Spanish and, um, you know, working out as usual. Well, one of the things I learned pretty quickly uh, coming to Bama and spending three years there before I came home was that usually when you saw one Humphrey, you saw the claim. Because y'all <laughs> yeah. travel together now. And, you know, obviously yeah. the, son of a, the son of a Bama legend, your dad, Bobby, was a great player at, at, at Alabama. <laughs> Uh, talk a little bit about what it was like. You know, your dad had great success, and there's so much pressure that goes on following in family name, family footstep, but uh, you, you were one of the few that have been able to do it, and you made it look easy. Uh, every day in practice, I'd see 26 with his jersey rolled up, and, of course, y'all can have y'all jerseys rolled up on defense, but the offense could not do anything like that. You know, we're not even going to get into that favoritism that was shown between the defense and the offense. <laughs> But talk a little bit about the transition of playing behind the legend of your dad who had such a great career at Alabama and, and how you were able to forge your own path as well. Um, you know, when I was in high school, it was like, you know, Bama was, of course, the team that recruited me. And I that, that did go in my head, like, you know, planting your dad's footsteps, you know, All-American in Bama, you know, all the big things he did. And, you know, I, I kind of thought about it and then, it, it kind of was was weighing on me, and then once I once I signed the Alabama and I looked back on it and just being there, it was, it seemed like so many connections was already made with that Humphrey name that it just one of the best decisions I ever made was to follow in his footsteps, and um, you know a lot of guys you know kind of shy away from that and sometimes can't really get out of those shadows, but I was able to do that, and a lot of it came from help with him going to playing college ball and getting to the league. He had told me so many stories, a lot of bad ones, but a lot of good ones too. And um, it, it just, it seemed like a lot of uh, mistakes I could have potentially made, he had already made for me and I felt like I had already lived them. And um, man, just, it, it was just one of the best things I ever made, man. I, from, I'm talking about connection down to uh, Miss Glenn, the ticket lady. Right. She's, I used to help out your dad with tickets. So it, it was, you know, just so many little connections. And um, it was just a great decision to follow those footsteps. And I'm really blessed to have a dad like, like I have. All right. And then you made this transition from Bama to another storied NFL uh, organization like the Baltimore Ravens with all the history and tradition that the Ravens uh, – used to be the Colts and now the Ravens has had under Steve Bashotti and Ozzie Newsom. Talk a little bit about what it was like moving from down south and, and what the Baltimore experience has been like for you as a pro and how, how much you like living up here? Man, I ain't gonna lie. My first experience, my first experience that comes to mind with, you know, learning about the North, you know, the South, you know, they say, you know, real friendly, you know, like overly friendly sometimes. I'm sitting with me, Tim Williams and Jalen Hill at Phillips in the Harbor. And, you know, we fresh off getting drafted, you know, I'm, I'm excited, you know what I mean? So we're talking to the waiter and somehow it comes up like, yeah, we play for the Ravens. She's like, y'all don't play for the Ravens. And we like, yeah, we yeah, we do. And she basically told us we're some bums. And I'm like, I'm like, dang, I'm the first round of pick. I'm like, Tim got drafted too. I'm like, so I just I, that was my first experience, but it has gotten better. Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a different type of way, man. But I really love the love that the Ravens fans give, um, especially the people that are in the city. You know, when I when I do like different charity events and things like that, they they might not know who they don't really know all the players, but they know they love the Ravens. You're not Lamar Jackson, they don't really know who you are, the the, the city city people, but they love the Ravens, and and that's what I really like. When you say you play for the Ravens, they're your best friend, and um, it reminds me a lot of you know about Bama, just having really true core fans that you know really want to show you love and are just happy to be around. So. It's been uh, – being in uh, Baltimore, it, it's been good. Um, I got to get to the city more, but playing in front of those fans, it's it's really good. Very passionate fan base. You guys electrified uh, us last year with the season you had. Obviously, you made a Pro Bowl in 2019, All-Pro 
uh, you know, in year three, uh, you're going into year four. Talk a little bit about what your expectations are. And obviously, because of the type of season you guys had, obviously you weren't happy with the way things ended. Uh, to your good friend with Derrick Henry and them coming to town, talk a little bit about kind of what your, the expectation is uh, as you go into year four and you guys coming off the type of season you had last year. What type of expectations do you have? Man, that's one of the things that, you know, the coronavirus is kind of setting back, you know, just getting back with the guys and really all together getting – figuring out what our mindset's going to be. But, you know, as a, as a unit, you know, we kind of – I think we felt like we kind of dropped the ball last year. And, uh, you know, we fell short. You know, I, I think it just came down to, you know, when the playoffs come, you got to play your best ball at the right time. And, um, you know, we kind of dropped the ball short. But, you know, we got, we got eight back. We got Lamar back. You know, we got – I think we got a lot of key pieces that are coming back that you can easily build on. Um, Ozzy and EDC did a great job with this uh, draft class. And I think, you know, you got to take it one game at a time, similar to how we did last year. But, you know, we, we definitely, I think, everyone will have the end goal in the back of their head and just, you know, remembering that loss. And you has got to take it one game at a time. But, no, when it comes playoff time, you got to play your best ball. But you, gotta, you do got to get there first. And that just comes one game at a time. No doubt. And, and obviously you played with the NFL MVP. You've had a chance to watch his development and become this electrifying player that week in and week out just became a highlight reel. And, and, and seeing the progression that Lamar made, talk a little bit about as a teammate what it was like seeing just some of the ridiculous things this guy does, man, on the field. And what it's like to have a guy like that as your leader on, on, on the offensive side and as a teammate. Man, Lamar, man, it, the, I was just telling somebody the other day, the, the jump he made from, from just OTAs to training camp last year, it was, it was a crazy jump. But the, the stuff he do in the games, I'm just happy it's, it's in a game. I don't have to guard that. Like, you know, he, he does some crazy stuff. And uh, it's been a lot of times, you know, NFL, you're not really truly thudding somebody all the time in practice. So it's a lot of people that say they tackle Lamar and different things, but deep down we all know that was not going to be a tackle in a game and different things. But I think the biggest thing Lamar does is is it's just the way he goes about, you know, being in the building, being with his teammates. Um, anytime Lamar shows up to, to any event that we invite him to, we all know it's going to be – everyone's going to go crazy for Lamar and – He's not going to be able to enjoy himself or anything, but he's still humble enough to support his teammates when we have our different events here and there. And, you know, just I think last year he tried to learn everybody's name in the whole building. You know, that's stuff that, you know, kind of doesn't get seen, but he's just really humble, probably one of the most humble guys I've been around. Um, he reminds me of a Jalen Hurts, just more energetic. You know, Jalen's as humble as can be, but he scored the touchdown. He doesn't even celebrate for real. But Lamar is basically just – I mean, he's one of the most humble guys I've ever been around, and um, I just can't wait to to see how he grows. You know, he's only in year two MVP, so it's only going up from here. Well, you've definitely carved a niche for yourself. Uh, all pro in year three, pro bowl in year three. Uh, I know you, your guy, having watched your development there at Bama and, and seeing how you've continued to progress as a pro. Uh, I know you got a big, uh, big year ahead of you, man, and it's really great to watch and see what you guys are doing for the DMV community, uh, what you guys are doing up in Baltimore. And I know you're always a guy, really strong spiritual base. You do a lot in the community. Uh, and I'm looking forward, man. Let's catch up when you get back up this way. Appreciate your time. Uh, I know it was hard to get caught up with you, but I had to get a Raven on here, man. And I appreciate you coming on. And we'll catch up when you make it back up this way. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. No doubt, man. Marlon Humphrey, Baltimore Raven. Pro Bowl corner, uh, again, the season the Baltimore Ravens had last year uh, really turned this area uh, upside down. Didn't finish the way they wanted to, but, again, the fact the season that Lamar Jackson had, Mark Ingram, and then even uh, the job that, that Marlon Humphrey did out there on the corner. Uh, really excited for uh, next season for our Baltimore Ravens. And we'll continue this thing on. We're going to bring on uh, a guy that I had the privilege of being a part of recruiting and coaching, uh, was a starter from the time he stepped foot on campus. He's a 2017 national champion, made first team all SEC in 2019, was a second team All-American 
with the number 10 pick in the first round of the 2020 draft to the Cleveland Browns, Jedrick Wills Jr. What's up, Jed? What's good, Coach? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm a talk show host now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to try to try my hand on this uh, talk show gig, man. What's been going on? You look like you're lounging. Yeah, I'm lounging. Uh, just been doing the meetings through Zoom, uh, working out in the playbook, same old per usual. Got it, man. So what? So that's what your quarantine's been about. You know, I know I had a chance to to watch. You know, via Instagram, you and I stay in touch a lot. And I saw you were down at the Michael Johnson facility as you prepared for the draft. And 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 right now, you know, obviously with the pandemic and and not being able to necessarily have OTAs and mini camps. What's your life been like as you've transitioned to the league? I know you said you've been doing a lot of Zoom yeah. meetings. Talk a little bit about that. Um, so it's just been the mandatory Zoom meetings, you know, with the team, um, O-line team meetings, et cetera. Um, just really just getting the playbook and trying to do everything that we can while we're in quarantine. Um, there's not much you can do. So everything's been virtual. They're doing this workouts. Um, just working on individual stuff, trying to get better. Got it, man. Now, you are a guy that had a chance, and you, you did something that's not – easily done you know being a coach of 30 years and and we oftentimes talk about the toughest position to play early is in the trenches right i know for a fact having coached you and, and watched the process of us bringing you uh, to alabama that from day one man you stepped right in at the right tackle position even though i know in my opinion you could very easily swing over and play the left side talk right. a little bit about what that transition was like going from high school you know, growing up and playing in Kentucky, uh, right. you disappointed a lot of people when you left the state and came, <laughs> and came to Bama. But what was that transition like uh, for a true freshman uh, right. to walk off the yellow school bus into starting every game as a right tackle as a true freshman? How was that transition and what was that like for you? Well, coming from Kentucky, you know, we, we play ball up here, but it's not like Florida, Texas, or California. Or Georgia, it's it's a different game coming from or the DMV, or the DMV, or the DMV. I, I give y'all some love, um, but it, it was a even major jump coming from Kentucky, um, and then going to the top school in the country. So really, it was just a, a like opportunity where you had to nut up and just kind of grow up. Um, you had to take accountability into your own hands, and you know, uh, put forth the effort to kind of go out there and take what you thought was yours. Um, I came in there with you all. Um, you know, great squad, just coming from the national championship. Um, and I was just trying to come in and do the, do the same thing and put forth my best effort to do what I could for the team. Right. Now, let's talk about a month ago, man. Uh, I sat – I was covering the draft here with the local uh, NBC Sports Washington team, uh, and I got a chance to cover the first round. And I know mom, dad, grandpa, little bro, the right. little twin, everybody right. – what was that emotion and feeling like for you, man, hearing your name called the 10th pick in the draft and then going to a place like a, 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 the Cleveland Browns that haven't had a lot of success, but it is a storied organization that has had, uh, you know, in, back in the day, they were one of the, the top programs in the NFL. What was it like being drafted for you and your family, and especially me knowing where you guys come from and how hard and humble a family you guys have? Yes, sir. Um, I mean, Blessed uh, for the opportunity. Um, I think it's a good draft because of this virus and whatnot, the pandemic being bad. Today I still got drafted. It was a dream come true. It was like all day leading up to it, you were very calm, quiet. Like, the emotions were all over the place. It was like a roller coaster. And then just sitting there from the TV, um, in the right name, you know, with the 10th pick, the boys, the pick is in. Um, it, was, it was realistic enough. And I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have. But coming into the Browns, uh, I just want to do what I can do, contribute however they need to. Um, just try to turn this program around, try to get it going in the direction. Um, and I feel like we got the draft class. Right. And you'll be reunited with a former uh, a former uh, teammate and Mac Wilson and those guys. Now, right. one of the things that I, that's interesting for me is, you know, the system that we ran, uh, that you played in, that we're running here at Maryland, uh, if you had the – do you feel as though you – are prepared based off of what we ran and the things we did on offense? Do you feel that you're prepared to go and perform at a high level in the NFL based off of the system and what we did and, and, and what the NFL system's like? Do you feel like you, you're you prepared to go do that because yeah. of 
the system you played in? Right, most definitely. So, like, even when I was telling you, like, studying the playbook and whatnot and just going through the calls, like, you'll see some stuff in the NFL playbook extensive, but you'll see some things that you already know because of the playbook that we had at Alabama. Like, some calls will be the same. There's even a couple of plays that are the same. Um, the schemes and the concept, they're so advanced. Uh, you start recognizing things that they're trying to teach to the other teams coming in or even the guys that play the team. Um, the things that the teacher already know. So that just gives you, a, like, a, a head start on that type of stuff. You know, one of the things that watching you at the Combine and, and just hearing so many people were, like, just shocked that you ran the way you ran, your 40, your vertical jump. And, and I can always remember saying, man, this dude is just so athletic for a big guy. What What's the basis, do you think, what's the basis for, for your athleticism? Were you a guy that grew up playing basketball? Were you a, a right. skinny guy that grew up into a big guy? Like, wh what's the basis of the athleticism? Because – You've got some off the chart athleticism that normally doesn't uh, you don't see in tackle bodies like yours. I wish I could say I was skinny. Uh, I've been big forever. Uh, I was skinny for probably about five months. <laughs> uh, really, just playing multiple sports that definitely helped. Um, basketball was also was like actually my first love. I thought I was going to be a point guard one day. Started packing on the pounds, so that that kind of went out the window. But just playing multiple sports, uh, and I feel like it's the way you carry yourself. Like, you know, just trying to trying to put forth effort to be a better athlete, um, to start getting into some versatility, having some different things under your belt, um, just doing that stuff and working on it. I mean, you can, you can get athletic, so right. just kind of working on how to put forth effort to do what you can do. Well, I know you you and I like to uh, we share music taste. What, what, what are you rocking? It ain't an iPod anymore, but what, what's, your new, what's your new album that you've been rocking? Because I know – much like me, you were a huge Uzi Vert fan. I know his 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 uh project came out a while ago. What new music? What new music is Jedrick Wills listening to right now? I'm gonna have to go with Uzi. I mean, he got the best album out, but uh, <laughs> no, that's my favorite artist. I know. I know with Uzi. That's my favorite artist, man. Shout out to him. Uh, but Gunna and Key Glock just dropped their album, so I've been listening to that all day, all night. Um, but I got a, I got a circle of artists, but I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Uzi as my favorite. I didn't doubt that that was the case because I, I just know when you used to pull up uh, for Burger Night, you would be banging the Uzi Vert in the driveway. And, right. And it took him a while to come out with a new project, so you were playing a lot of the, the old stuff and some of his underground stuff. So, well, look, man, I, I know you're busy. I just – I'm excited for you and your family. Tell your family I said hello. What's, what's, what's little bro doing? Is he, is, he, is he playing football? Is he going to be playing football? What's up, what's up with the big fella? Uh, so I mean, he he's just like everybody else. He's on standby right now. He's he's the same old Kendall. Uh, what grade is he in now? Uh, he's a freshman. He's gonna be a sophomore next year. So okay. I, I wing bringing him to workouts. With me. He's doing the same exact stuff I'm doing. So even at the level I'm trying to give him a head start on everybody else. So he's doing what I'm doing. Uh, quarantine things, playing video games. He's still the same Kendall though. He's still doing the same thing. Well, tell mom, dad, everybody. You know, I had a chance to watch him come up from like sixth grade and. It's amazing to see him on some of the videos with you, man. Tell everybody I said hello. We wish you guys uh, safety as we work through the pandemic. You keep busting your ball, busting your busting yourself, uh, working hard uh, as you prepare for your first season, man. And we'll catch up. I know you guys play the Ravens down here at some point. And, we do, and, and it'll be very interesting. But I'm looking forward to seeing you. First one, huh? I think it's our first one, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, right off the bat. I got to get I got to double check that, but I think that's our first game. There will be no love lost in that game between I just had Marlon on before you, so there will be no love lost in that game, man, but wish you well. Good luck, stay safe and healthy, man, and we'll catch up soon. Yes, sir, most definitely. Appreciate you for having me on here. All right. Jedrick Wills Jr., first round draft pick of the Cleveland Browns, uh expecting big things out of him, uh, uh, an offensive tackle. Uh, walked on the field as a true freshman, started every game during his career in college, and I expect him to be able to do the same thing as he takes the next step and moves into the NFL. Again, what a great, great show. I want to thank Reese Davis. I want to thank Jedrick Wills and Marlon Humphreys for their time tonight. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys on Late Night with Locks Tuesday. It's two more shows, people. Two more shows. Don't miss Late Night with Locks Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Have a great weekend and a great holiday. Stay safe.